All right, so the third FRQ that you'll run into on any of the AP Physics exams is the experimental design and analysis. Now, AP Physics 1 and, the, and AP Physics 2 have had experimental design questions in the past, however, and, and this is new for AP Physics C. However, um, I think there's a bit of difference in the way they're structuring the experimental design. It used to be quite a bit more open-ended on the experimental design, but it feels a bit more structured in terms of the question and expectations. Like for example, they'll give you the equipment that you are have available for you. So you just, it's, it's a little bit more constrained on what you're gonna do. And it's a little bit less emphasis on the actual experiment design a lot more emphasis on the analysis, um, it feels like at least. So it's kind of split into two parts. The first part is where you're gonna design a lab, short lab, not as extensive, I think, with the constrained equation. So there's really two parts. So that's the design portion of the lab question. Um, so then that's, that's where you have to develop a method by which you are gonna measure quantities. And you always gotta think when you're doing an experimental design, you gotta vary one quantity and observe the response in that quantity. And then they're generally gonna to wanna to show you, you're gonna to need to describe how to linearize the graph to get to extract some information from there. Okay, and then the second part is they're, then they're gonna switch, so it's not your design, it's like they're gonna give you an experimental setup that someone is doing, and then you are gonna do the analysis of that. Okay, so like I said, it's, it's similar, but you'll see like it's a bit different. It's, it's a few, it's less points, it used to be 12 points, now it's 10 points, and the suggested time I think is, a, is pretty unsimilar. So um, let's take a look at like um, this first question here this example question from the college board. So a group of students given a cylindrical container half filled with a liquid of unknown density rho. So this is a fluids question. Students have access to an additional container. So they're telling you what you have access to, an additional container with more of the same liquid, meter sticks and pressure sensor. They, you don't have a scale. So this is kind of new. They don't, they're starting to restrict you on the kinds of things that um, you, you have access to. Like, so you can't, it's not so open-ended. Students are asked to take measurements to create a graph that can be used to determine the density of the liquid. Okay, describe an experimental procedure. The students could use to collect the data needed to determine the density of the liquid, include any steps necessary to reduce experimental uncertainty. That part's the same. That means you you want to vary the quantities and you also want to repeat. Go ahead and say you're gonna repeat it multiple times. If needed, you may include a simple diagram of the setup. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about is we have a pressure sensor, but not a scale. So I can't figure out the weight, but theoretically you could maybe estimate the area and do it that way. But that's not what they're looking for. They really want you to make sure you understand pressure versus height. So your first step is to think about what equation would relate. Like when you're doing this, you wanna think about like what equation connects the pressure so we're gonna put a, maybe we're gonna fill it with a, a, a liquid and then we wanna measure the pressure at different points. And we know the pressure here is atmospheric pressure. So what you might wanna do is you might wanna just say like, hey, I'm gonna measure the pressure at different heights and what principle, that's the hydrostatic equation, is gonna be P0 plus rho GH. So what we can do is we can vary the depths. So we can vary this because we can place the pressure sensors at different locations on the height here. Um, this we can measure, and we're also gonna measure this, but we're gonna measure this as a constant. And so the first step is just to say like, you want, I, I want you to have this equation in mind because it helps, it's gonna inform the second part on how you're gonna use it um, because you need to ultimately get the density here. And that's done by linearization. But the information we need is we want to measure the pressure at the surface of the liquid or in the air. So I, I like to number them because I think it's more organized, easier to read for the grader to understand. You're going to um, place the pressure sensor at a height um, and record the height below, below the surface, because that's what H is, right? When we're talking about another point, what H is how far, how much below the pressure before the surface or the other point. And the uh, pressure value, sure amount. So we're gonna record both the pressure and that, and then now we're gonna repeat it, repeat to 
step or repeat step two with five different heights. And you might you could also say repeat each measurement, repeat each height measurement, height and pressure measurement. Uh, three times. That will help reduce the experimental uncertainty. Doing the different heights and repeating the measurement will reduce the experimental uncertainty. Like both of those are applicable. So you don't necessarily have to do both, but I just throw both in there. Just cover all my bases. Describe how the data collected in part A could be potentially, could be plotted to create a linear graph. Okay. So when you're doing a linear graph, you're always trying to either match it to y equals mx plus b or y equals mx if there's no y intercept. So in your equation here, one thing you have to note is that like X has to be a X and Y both need to be varying quantities. They need to, they need to, they, they need to be quantities that are changing in the experiment. Like you're going to get columns of data and like they're, they're both going to be changing, right? Whatever that happens to be. B and M and B, the Y intercept have to be constants when you do this. Okay. So that's like the main idea. So you have to recognize this. So what is constant? The density Rho and G are constant, and then P0 is constant because that's the air pressure. Air pressure presumably doesn't change when you do different trials. I mean, air pressure can vary a little bit, but like, like it's, that's not really going to change. So these guys are constant. So it's probably easier to just say like, hey, let's make uh, – you always want to figure out what you want your density to be. And see, because it's connected to H, that's easiest to make this the slope. This is going to be our slope. And then that means we're going to plot this as our x variable. So that's mx. We'll plot this as our y variable, the pressure, because that also varies. And then this will be our b. So the y-intercept will be the atmospheric pressure if we're going to plot that. Um, so actually, you didn't need to measure this. I guess you could extract it from the plot, basically. So we're going to plot um, the pressure versus g times the height. You could just do the height and then the, the slope and the slope of the best fit line. Will equal the density. So that's the two parts for the experimental design portion, right? So now we're going to actually do some analysis. So this is just making sure you can design an experiment and things like that. So now we're going to go into these, we're going to, they, they give you an experiment. They give you a setup. Like this is different from part, the other parts, right? So this is separate and contained and they're just giving you an experimental setup. So the students make a small hole in the side of the cylinder and measure the speed V at which the water exits the hole. The students plug the first hole, make another one at a different height and repeat this procedure. So we're varying this, this height here and we're measuring the velocity, the speed at which it comes out. OK, so now this is not hydrostatic pressure anymore. This is dynamics because the fluid is moving. Right. So this is Bernoulli's is the principle you're thinking about. Uh, students correctly determine. Um, so this is we haven't gotten to the question. They're just sort of giving you the setup. So let me put this over here so we can read through. Students correctly determine the relationship between H and V. So now they didn't ask you to derive it. They're just giving you the velocity is equal to square root of 2GH. And the students create a graph with V squared. So this is very common now is they're constraining it no more. There used to be like they could just say like, what do you plot? And sometimes they will still ask you to plot, but sometimes they will also constrain it and say like, hey, if the vertical axis is V squared, what can be the horizontal axis where the slope can be used to calculate an experimental value for, in this case, acceleration to gravity. So we look at our equation. You may have to derive this equation or it may be given to you. But in this case, v squared equals 2gh. And again, this is looks like y equals mx, right? So you want to identify, well, the vertical axis, this is our y variable, all right? Because that's the vertical axis. Now, I want this to be my slope. I want g to be my slope. So my horizontal axis should be the 2h part. That should be x. So I'm going to plot 2x. Now you could just plot x. Okay, x is fine. Then your slope would be 2g. I prefer to just try to make the slope as to just minimize the amount of work and just say the slope is the exact value. But um, sorry, not 2x, 2h is what I should say. But uh, your x variable is going to be 2h, right? So that is the y equals mx. That's the linearization like there. Okay, and then on the grid, we want to get that data 
and put it in there. Now, one of the advantages now is that because it's on digital testing, you can um, use Desmos, right, to help you plot some of this stuff, right? <laughs> so I will pull up a Desmos that's equivalent if you just want help to calculate some of these things. Uh, let me show you I can calculate this if you wanted to just get the table of values because that's the most important thing is you can put in the table of values. So the X variable is gonna be zero, this is the height, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0 0.1, 0 0.05. And then the Y variable, let's just say 2.2, 2.0, 1.8, 1.4, 1.1. .1. Oh, this should be 1.4. And this is, and then what you can do on this is you can just say like, oh, well I wanna double the H, right? So you do X underscore one and then times two and that'll give you those values, and then you want to square the speed. So when the y1 exponent squared, like that, and then that will give you your table of values. And so you can, um, for the sake of this, I'm going to put it over here, just so then we can have this plot. So this is going to be our x variable. This is going to be our y variable, because that's the v squared. And so now we can look at our axes. They already gave you the v squared and the axes. So here, you just want to make this equal to uh, 2h, and the parentheses are in meters. So this is saying the axes, and you wanna label the units here. Now we wanna go from zero to 0.5. So each 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. You wanna use at least half the graph, okay, when you're doing this. Don't try to cram it all into here. You wanna be able to look at it so that, that's, that you can draw a line and calculate a slope that's pretty accurate. Okay, this is our exit. So it's gonna be 0.5, 4.84. So for each of these must be one, two, three, four, five. Each of these has to be 0 0.2, right? This is 4.2, 4.4, 4.6, 4 4.8, right? So this is 4.842468884 is probably right around there. And then 0 0.4, and then 4, and then 0.3, and then 3.2, this is 4, so about there, 0 0.2, and then 1.96. So this is 1.8, 1.9 is here, 1.96 is probably right about there. And then 0.1 and then 1.21, which is probably right like there. And so now we want to draw a straight line. And so you have paper, so you want to use a ruler. And I will, I will modify mine a little bit because a little bit easier if I actually. So, but you just do your best idea. It's easier if you have a ruler to do this. Um, you're just going to try to. Stop being so annoying. Okay, I'll do it over here. It's like trying to snap. Okay. Anyway, when you have a ruler, that'll be easier. And then you want to pick two points that are easy for you to read off the graph in here and far enough away. That makes your slope kind of accurate. So this is a line of best fit. Um, let's pick this point right here. So this point here, and usually if you see the solution keys, uh, scoring guidelines, they always put an open circle. You don't want to pick your data points. You want to pick two points on the line, right? Because you're doing a line of best fit. So this is four, one, two, three. No, this is four, two, four, 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 six. This is 0.46, and the y value is 4.4. 4. And then this x value is 0 0.08, and the y value is 1.0. So then our slope, so to calculate this, draw the best fit line and calculate the experimental value. So the slope is going to be 4.4 minus 1.0 over 0 0.46 minus 0 0.08. And that will give you divided by 0.46 minus 0 0.08. I don't know. I get 8. Oops. 8.95 meters per second squared. Okay. So it's supposed to be 9.8. Probably quite a bit off. I don't know. Usually there's some bounds on here that they expect it to be. Um, but like as long as you drew a line that's reasonable and calculated a slope that was reasonable, you could saw I had trouble drawing the line. When you have a ruler, it'll be a lot easier. Then you'll get a number. But then you just kind of like do that best fit part there. And that's the entire, uh, that's the entire question. That's how the experimental lab question is going to work. So a little bit different than maybe the old. So if you look at the old AP Physics 1, uh, experimental design questions, probably in some modifications, like they're not gonna be exactly like that. They're gonna be a bit more constrained. So there might be some that are good representations. Um, I'm gonna be working on converting some of those to look more like the current one, just because to give my students more practice 
and things like that.